Well, I know I said I was going to do a review video in the last little preview video that I just posted not too long ago. But, you know what? I flew this earlier and I had such an awesome flight. I have to actually redo that entire flight because it was so awesome. And I wanted to record it. And, of course, I get all done and something happened and the recording was corrupted. So it was a little bit disappointing. But we're here in Oregon and we're going to take a flight out to Crater Lake, which was actually named by William Gladstone Steele in 1855 as Witch's Cauldron. And there's an island there named Wizard Island. It's uh, the fifth oldest national park in the United States. The lake is almost 2,000 foot deep at its deepest point and makes it the second deepest in the United States and I think the ninth deepest in the world. So it's really an amazing sight uh, to see and we're going to go check it out. We're in the Beechcraft Bonanza V35. plane was just released by Microsoft. It's in the Sim Marketplace. It is an awesome, awesome plane. It costs $16 with tax. Uh, U.S. dollars, that's what it cost me with tax. 16 U.S. dollars. But you know what? The plane is just so sweet just it's a classic it really is a classic plane it's got great lines it's, it's just a fun plane to fly and like I said I flew this flight earlier it was really really nice I, I, I can't believe how many times I'm saying these double superlatives and I'm, I'm trying to break myself of that habit and I'm gonna try and watch that but the plane itself is really sweet. The flight that I flew earlier was very nice and I was very disappointed that the recording didn't work. So we're going to refly that flight and record it again and hopefully this time the recording will not get corrupted. Let's check out our map. Turn a little bit more. Get on course. Let's zoom in. Oops. Always do that. I think I would know by now. I do that every time and have so many times. <laughs> so, uh, different livery now than what I had on my first video with this airplane. Came with 11 liveries. All really nice looking. I like this. This is a very, very nasty dare. I did it again. <laughs> it's a very attractive color scheme. Now we head this way. All right. We're going to head this way. We're going to trim her out so we're not climbing now. Bring the prop down a little. Let's adjust our pitch to get our speed where we want it. And increase throttle to prevent the climbing. Beautiful day for a flight. So I did not see any manual for this airplane in the folder. Now I know that this plane was available for Flight Sim 10 as well as the uh, one of the other Flight Sims and so maybe the manual is going to be the same and that manual is available so it may be the same manual. throttle here and we're at a good speed here 145 
That's interesting. The numbers on the specs are different than what uh, this plane looks like it could actually do. Okay. I'm off my heading again. But that's all right. Just another chance to enjoy flying and the scenery here in Oregon. So while we're flying, I'll tell you a little bit about the the lake. They got us back here on path. So, like I said, Crater Lake is an old lake that's been part of the National Park System since 1902. That's when it was established. And like I said, the lake is 1,949 feet deep at its deepest point, second deepest in the U.S., Swimming is actually allowed here, and they have boats that you can take tours. The boats were actually all brought up by helicopter. There are no streams in and out. They started stocking the lake with fish around 1888 and stopped in 1941. And now salmon and trout both thrive here. So we will be coming back here later with maybe the twin otter to land in the lake and do some fishing with real VR fishing because it is one of the locations and that's how I actually discovered it was through real VR fishing and then when I was doing some research about the crater it was so fascinating to me I had to come back as just a sightseeing tour and check out Wizard Island I mean how could you resist something called Wizard Island so it's a cinder, what they call a, a, a volcanic cinder cone. That's how it was formed. The top of it is 755 feet above the surface of the lake, but it's 6,933 feet above sea level. And like I said, it was named Witch's Cauldron in 1885 by William Gladstone Steele. He also named the island Wizard Island. And it's just a really nice place to check out, fly around, and I'm sure it'll be an awesome place to come back and do some fishing in. And I know I'm not staying on my course, but I am keeping it in sight. I'm just enjoying the plane here around these mountains and this fantastic scenery in Oregon. Never actually flown around Oregon very much. So this is a new area for me. And I like it. It really is a nice, nice area. Lost a little bit of speed, so let's try and adjust that again. I also have to watch the mixture, obviously, at altitudes like this. So the rim of the crater ranges from 7,000 feet to 8,000 feet. Not above the surface of the lake. <laughs> that would be pretty impressive. But it's it's a, an amazing lake to see. And so I really hope you're enjoying the flight. And checking out Oregon and the new Coronado Beechcraft Bonanza V35, single engine, four passenger, or four, well, not really four passengers because one's a pilot, but four person, yeah, that's what I wanted to say, yeah, <laughs> four person, nice cargo area, a little luggage area in the back. So we're getting close now. 
Yeah, let's see what time is it? I think it's around noon, right? Where is the clock here? Do we have a clock on the panel here? Um, oh, right there, 10.30. So 10.30 in the morning, 10.30 a.m. here for the flight. bouncy but that's not unusual for the mountains one of my absolute favorite places to to fly and I, I live in the mountains of the United States and so I love to live in the mountains as well I love to drive around them I love to travel near them anything that has to do with the mountains I just I don't know why I've been attracted to them as long as I can remember and being able to fly around the mountains all around the world <laughs> in virtual reality just is so incredible. And it's getting so much better every time the drivers come out and get updated. And, you know, this new Sim Update 10 beta that I'm, I've been testing, which has the DLSS. And that has made such an incredible difference. My frame rates are easily. 10 to 15 frames per second higher than I was getting. But more important than that is I'm getting it with also being able to increase all my settings. My trees are on ultra right now. My buildings are on high. My ground is on medium. I could never have done that with before DLSS. No way. My computer, even with the 3070. So here we go. Here's the Crater Lake. Here it is. Witch's Cauldron in Oregon. And you can see is the volcanic cinder cone, which is the island known as Wizard Island. And like I said, there's no inlets here, nothing going out, nothing here. So water will evaporate over time, but melting snow and rain keeps it full enough. The salmon and trout are said to thrive here so I'm very anxious to come back here and fly and yeah I think I'm going to come back with the um, the twin otter amphibious land it in the lake do some fishing see if we can catch a salmon or two or some trout and then head back so big lake big crater really a neat place to fly around. I'm going to kind of get out of the crater and just a little bit over the edge here over the rim. And you can see the altitude here at 7,000. Coming up at 7,100 feet. which fits with the numbers that I read as far as the range of the rim and its height. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe the surface water is high right now for this time of year, if that's even possible in the sim, I don't know. Probably not, but that, that looks like it's, I don't know, more than 700 foot above the surface of the lake. Um, but that's what it said when I looked up the information on the area. It was, uh, what was it? It was, yeah, 755 feet above the surface of the lake. And the range of the rim was 7,000 to 8,000 feet. So it seems about right. Looking here, we're at 7,000. Let's make sure we get my altimeter set yet. 7,500. And this looks like a high spot on the rim right here. Yeah, pretty close to 8,000. So I guess those numbers were accurate. And it looks like the elevations here are pretty accurate. Let's uh, take a look at the volcanic, the volcanic cinder cone which constitutes 
Wizard Island. Wizard Island, the volcanic cinder cone in the middle of Witch's Cauldron or a crater lake in Oregon. Very nice. Yep, coming back here to go do some fishing. And that, of course, will be another video in the series that's on my channel now called Flying and Fishing. I think I have five there, five videos, where I'm combining Microsoft Flight Simulator with Real VR Fishing, which is an Oculus Quest app. It has two locations, the U.S. West Coast and South Korea. And each one has, I don't know, probably 25 or 30 different sites. And of course, they're real world sites, which means they're in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I've been flying to them in the simulator and then changing to real VR, fishing, and doing some fishing, and then combining it into a video. Uh, kind of neat to see, and it's been a lot of fun to do, but. For me, hey, anything that has to do with flying or fishing is fun. Whether it's real or virtual, I don't care. I love them both. And combining the two together is, is the best of both worlds. What can I say? Fishing and flying. So check them out. I don't know how many I'll do. I could theoretically do... Oh, I could see the lights of the airport already. I could see the beacon from here. Nice. Like, um... Yeah... Flying and fishing, like I said, uh, you know, theoretically I could do probably 50 or 60 videos. I don't know if I'll do every location. I don't think every location could actually be reached very easily with a float plane or any other plane. I suppose I could try and take a helicopter into one or two of them, but I don't know. We'll see. There are a lot of really, really nice locations. I started out at uh, the base of Yosemite in Yosemite Park, the base of El Capitan, largest piece of granite that I know about in the world, and uh, so did a couple other places, San Francisco Harbor and so forth. A lot of fun. Well, like I said, flying and fishing, they're fun, period. <laughs> Getting some fantastic performance here with DLSS enabled in the sim update 10 beta this is 1.27.14.0 it's the latest beta release of the sim update which i think is scheduled to be released in another week week and a half i believe so and uh yeah it's great and i hope that once it's released that nvidia who just released a game ready driver 516.94 you know they they come out with a new driver every once in a while and one of the biggest changes on those drivers usually is their support of DLSS in a new game and so I'm hoping that the next driver or the one after once Microsoft releases this with official DLS DLSS support and of course it's NVIDIA so if you don't have an NVIDIA card it doesn't really help you out and that stinks but maybe you get good results already um and if you do, that's awesome, too. I didn't. I mean, I got okay. I could, you know, usually stay around 30 frames per second with things turned off or on low. Uh, maybe a couple things on medium. But now I can fly with a lot of things on high and ultra. And that really has changed everything for me. And still get 40 to 45 frames per second instead of 30. So once that new driver is released once DLSS is an official sim update. I, I can only imagine it's just going to keep getting better. Faster and smoother and better. It's a long 
ways from when I started flying in DOS. <laughs> yeah, yep. Every version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I had the Combat Flight Simulators, both of those, the Pacific and the European. I had Flight Sim 10. I had all the Flight Sims, like I said, going back. Flight Sim 98. All the way back. So a lot of time flying. And I've always enjoyed it, but man, I like virtual reality. This is just something I never would have dreamed of, never would have imagined. Not back then. Yeah, you know, I forget to clear the sky sometimes. Not a good thing to do, you know, if you have live traffic on and stuff. And you really need to be in the habit of, even though there are no collisions, it seems, even with realism and crashes in naval, because I don't have any of that stuff turned off. I mean, if I hit something, I crash. End of story. It's I don't have any of the things that make it safe or arcadey or, you know, I, everything for realism that I can get, I have. So let's, uh, Let's try out the blinder here. Yeah, come here, my mouse. Here we go. Oh yeah, that works pretty good. Now it looks like the moon. <laughs> but yeah, hey, works good. Alrighty. So, all right, so there we go. There's the strip. Let me get on my landing lights. And let's see, we need to go down a little bit. Not a whole lot. Uh, we'll start descending here, just adjusting myself so I can get my feet more securely on my rudder pedals here. Since I'm going to be landing. No need to do that. All right, so I had a little bit of a break in the recording there because I wanted to stop and save what I had so far. <laughs> Because, like I said, I flew this once already and lost the flight, the recording. Very disappointing. This is going to be a long video, obviously, and I know that based on the average watch times, <laughs> people won't watch a whole lot of it, but that's all right. As I've said many times now, I put these up there. Well, if I'm doing a review or trying out something new or testing the beta, well, yes, I am testing it for myself self as well, but I'm not recording it for myself in that case. But on a flight like this, I actually like to sit back later on, you know, put it up on my big TV. It's high def. I, I record them in high def. And I watch them on my TV. I find it very relaxing. It's, it's like watching a real pilot, you know, on TV. Like, uh, or on YouTube, which I follow uh, several real pilots. I follow ones that fly the planes that I like to fly. And, because you learn a lot from them. Steve-O, Steve-O Knievo, I forget now, but he, he's on YouTube and he flies a TBM. And uh, I, I learned a lot from my younger brother introduced me to him. And... He flies, like I said, the TBM, I think it's the 930, as well as what we have in the SIM. And so I, I learned a lot from him. Uh, yaw dampeners, I never even really heard about them until I watched some of his videos. So, yeah, great, great stuff. And, and like I said, so I put my own videos up and I watch them. It gives me a chance to really relax and enjoy more of the scenery, that's for sure. <laughs> Because when I'm flying, I'm flying, and you know I, I'm enjoying the view, but I'm, I'm also paying attention to flying. 
And later on when I watch it, I can just watch it. So, But if you're with me for parts of it or all of it or some of it, whatever, I am very grateful and I appreciate it. And if you like the videos or leave comments, I really appreciate that. I don't do this to make money. I don't have enough subscribers or views for that. Maybe maybe someday, but yeah, again, that's that's not my goal. So, but it it does it does make me feel good to know someone watches it and and enjoys it. So, I appreciate that. I appreciate the likes and the comments very much. All right, let's uh slow down here. We can get our gear dropped. Make sure we got our prop forward. Mixture forward. And gear down. Yeah, so we get the flap speed. to approach a little high so I'm going to have to drop some altitude rather quickly here so let's do a little bit of a slip in I don't want to drop it too fast Little strip, no lights here, it seems. And this is where we took off from, we just returned back. So, the first time I landed here, I almost ran out of runways. So I gotta be real careful here. Better control my speed better there, see? Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can turn over here. Last time I went over to the gas tanks over there. We don't need to do that here. Flaps up. Yes, landing lights off. Uh, I don't need my taxi lights on. I actually don't need any lights on at this point. Uh, that was an awesome flight. I am going to love having this plane in the sim. $16, 16 US dollars, that's what it cost me with tax, after, you know, after taxes were added. And, okay, I say worth it, yeah. Um, it really is just a fantastic little plane. Parking brakes on. Let's drop the mixture and kill the engine softly. That is the way to do it. Pull the mixture and let it in that way. Then we shut off the stator and.
All right. Yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the skies.